words are so important. Um, so important. And, and I'm not just talking about to Google. Like Google is semantically obsessed. Fine. Take that, put it aside for a moment. The words that you choose to use are, they're going to dictate how well you connect with your audience or just with another individual, just you and I directly. My word choice right now could attract, could repel. It could just piss you off. I've heard people talk about some of the words that I use. I use ubiquitous too often, by the way, and I've been called to task on it. But that's an important note for me to have. And it probably stems from my violent insecurities, which is why I tend to try to rely on $13 words to make me sound smarter than I really am. Um, but you can you can gather indications of things like that through people's word choice. It's the most important social architecture. It's it's the thing that makes us human. Words are they're 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 what give life to thought. Um, there's no overstating the value or importance of words. I say that to say this. Um, shout out to Jan Slavnik. For a phenomenal question. Jan asks, Kasim, I've heard you talk a lot of times about the difference between house, home, keywords, but never heard you talk about how you came to that conclusion. Could you make a video about that? Yes. Yes, I can, Jan. Great question. Thank you so much for letting me jump on my soapbox because it's one of my favorite discussions of all time. And I'm going to give you all some context. So what Jan is talking about is um, I refer to the same story uh, very often um, because it's such a, it's such a phenomenal example. We had the highest performing real estate investment campaign on the planet uh, for seven years, for, for almost a decade. And I can prove that. Um, and we started, I, I ended up, I had a buddy who was flipping houses in Phoenix, Arizona, and he was doing like, you know, door knockers and driving for dollars and bandit signs. And I was like, I bet you I could get more leads on Google than you can and all these things. And so, you know, I sort of put my money where my mouth is and he and I partnered up. And so I would generate the leads and, and you've seen these, these campaigns, by the way, you've seen them everywhere, you know, billboards radio, television, newspaper, um, it's all over the place. Sell your house fast for cash, right? So these are real estate investors that want to buy your house and they want to they save you from the headache and heartache that is the real estate process, uh, all of the fees associated with selling a house. And in so doing, they make a margin, whatever, whatever margin they can negotiate. And it, very cutthroat business, super sophisticated, lots of big players in it. Um, and we started in a little Phoenix, Arizona, and we crushed it. And we did so well that... We, Greg and I, my business partner at the time, decided to stop flipping houses and start selling marketing. And so we ended up in every single major MSA, almost, uh, in the United States until I sold my half of that agency in June of 2019. Um, and I learned so much. I learned so much. Um, but one of the big learning lessons that came out of it was just how important some of those semantic variances are. So the example that I cite is we were able to find out that the term sell my house fast was more valuable than the term sell my home fast. And that was our, our most valuable key phrase, by the way, was sell my house fast or, or sell my house fast for cash was a really important qualifier. Um, and we would bid almost anything for that phrase. Like we'd spend hundreds of dollars per click um, in some instances, just because we knew like the person that's searching for this particular key phrase is going to be a very valuable, very valuable lead. Now, because that agency was so niche, um, we had quite a few... Uh, it, was, it was overreaching in a lot of ways, but we had some some um, um, managerial prerequisites. And so if you are a client, uh, you had to provide us with uh, lead quality data, um, which is really cool. It really helped us optimize early and often. And um, one of the things that we would do is we would have our clients score the leads. And the score was anecdotal. Um, you know, it was like, a, depending on what it was, who it was we were working with, it was like one to 10 or one to five. And um, they were scoring them on, on, on things that, you know, they were looking to identify based on the types of real estate that they did and the types of deals that they did. So, you know, some folks just did wholesale, fix and flip, creatively structured deals, whatever. But they would score the leads based on like motivation, equity, uh, accessibility, those types of things. And so they would give us these scores and we would use those scores in order to optimize the campaigns. Um, because it took a long time, sometimes months. I mean, some deals took a year, uh, not often, you know, but but it could take three, six months to, to close some of these deals, which is really funny because the, the whole pitch was sell your house fast for cash, but that wasn't always possible. You know, there was always, and even if you sold me the house as the real estate investor, that doesn't mean that I monetize the house because I'd have to buy the house, fix it up, sell it, flip it. And then we would get a, um, like an actual profit number. So the, 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 the steps in the process were long, which meant that it was a long sales cycle. Um, so we didn't know exactly how much people were making right out of the gate. And so we were optimizing based off of these anecdotal scores in the meantime. Well, we tracked enough of those deals for a long enough time. It took us about two years. And what we found out was the terms sell my house and sell my home were 
basically the same. They cost us the same amount of money. They produce the same number of leads, relatively speaking, for the same cost. And we're anecdotally, according to the sales team's scores, the same value, same motivation, same equity, et cetera. But when we tracked it all the way through to fruition, which of these key phrases produced the most closed deals, the most houses sold or bought, depending on where you are in that little subjective construct, um, the term sell my house fast produced more real estate deals than the term sell my home fast. Now, you know, we had a powwow about this and, and the, the why becomes pretty obvious, right? It's like anybody who uses the word home has a stronger psychological attachment to their property, but I never would have guessed that ever, 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 ever in a million years. And we analyzed other phrases too. Remember, we we're so niche. It was so cool. And my business partner, Greg, was like a straight up data nerd. The dude would come in like hair on fire with these insane Google Sheets with 50 different tabs and pointing at all these different graphs. He was really, really, really fun to work with. Um, He's still doing this, by the way. If you're interested in real estate investment, you can go to geoflip.com. That was the agency. Really brilliant guy. Um, and and they're, they're still running these ads. Um, but in, you know, while we were the engine there, we were analyzing things and we found that there was a difference between buy, buyer and buying. So to use something that's a little less obvious, right? If somebody says uh, cash buyer, um, uh, people buying houses, um, uh, please buy my house, like those types of things. Like there were, there were semantic differences in nuanced phrases. And some of them that you couldn't, you know, that the sell my home, sell my house is, I like that example because it connects. But sometimes you're just like, you know, uh, redfish, bluefish, and you're like, oh, redfish works better. And I have no idea why. Um, but, then, but then you track it and you realize, well, oh, redfish only works better in the summers or whatever it ends up being. My point is this. The most valuable data that you have isn't the data that you have inside of Google Ads. Because Google Ads isn't going to show you ROI in its entirety, 90% of the time. Uh, even if you're e-com, you know, even if you're reporting revenue to Google Ads, that's just the first purchase. And for the vast majority of you, you do or should have longer sales cycles, upsells, uh, you know, a stronger lifetime value. Um, there's more to your customer than than what you're seeing inside of Google ads. And if you spend the time to really analyze and dive deep into what's going on, and that's especially true if you've niched down. If you've niched down, there's honestly no excuse not to. Um, and these are things, I mean, like I, I couldn't do this for a customer, right? The only reason we were able to do it inside of GeoFlip is because we actually controlled the entire sales process and we were a super expensive agency. You can see the pricing on the page, actually. You can see what they were charging um, in order to, to you know, participate in that whole package where we were basically coaching your sales team. It was a significant amount of money. Um, you need to look at your entire sales cycle and you need to track when you generate a lead, what happened to that lead all the way through, and then look at the common denominators. And you're going to find some really phenomenal things and not just with keywords. You can find really interesting common denominators behind like specific ge geographic regions or um, ads, offers, um, partners, competitors, but, but words... Words are so important. That's why I was so distraught when they took away search terms, um, you know, or, 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 you know, even with like broad match, um, I still believe so strongly in some level of keyword sculpting, depending on, you know, not for everything, obviously, but with real estate investment, for instance, anything that inch down, I think that it can still be really important. And we still do quite a bit of that, um, you know, behind the scenes for our clients where possible because search terms have been diluted. Um, but that learning lesson was the reason and, and I don't mean that specific lesson, but but the the fact that we were going after learning lessons like that, and we had dozens of them to stack, was the reason that we were able to outperform everybody else's campaign inside of this insanely competitive ecosystem. Y'all, there was private equity money there. You know, there, I mean, there's OfferPad, Open Door, Zillow, spending billions of dollars in marketing. And I'm being mildly hyperbolic. I don't know what they were spending, but it was a massive amount of money, more than more than we were in every single geography, and we beat them every single time. And it's because they went they went macro, we went micro. And with Google Ads, that actually is to your benefit. Um, to give you round numbers, my cost per lead in Phoenix when I started was like 450 bucks or something. It was just under 500. dollars And I remember that because uh, Sean Terry, who if you're in the real estate investment game, you know, really bright guy, very good dude, super integrous. Um, he, he, he's famous for his education. He te teaches people how to be real estate investors. Well, Sean, his home base is here. Um, we got to talk to him a couple of times, really good guy. And he was teaching other people, Google ads too. His cost per lead was 500 bucks. And so I was like, oh, I beat Sean Terry by 50 bucks. Good for me. You know, but I run a Google ads agency. He doesn't, he's an educator. So I mean, good for him for even getting that close. Um, 
my cost per lead in Phoenix was like 450. I think it was like 470. It was, it was whatever it was, just sub $500 when we started. Flash forward seven years later when we sold the agency, it was sub $100. It was like 70 to $90 depending on the, the time of year because it was cyclical, especially in Arizona. So over the course of seven years, I took almost 500 and I beat it up and I brought it down to under 100. And it was through micro optimizations like that. And a significant amount of those optimizations did not happen inside of Google ads. Couldn't have happened with data that I got from Google ads. It had to be conversion architecture data. It had to be data that, that a, that a, what would the, uh, I don't even know who the role is. I don't, I don't know if it's your CMO or your director of marketing or your COO or whoever, but, or your finance person, but somebody who is zoomed out, you know, like even if you're my client, I'm actually afraid of making this video right now while I'm thinking about it. Cause I don't want my clients to be like, Oh, awesome. You got to do the thing for me. You know? And I'm like, dude, I can't, it's your whole business model that you need to look at. It's the, it's, it's, you need to look at the entirety of it. And, and then you can start to see the genesis of each of your best leads and now we can map that back to profitability and monetization. And I have clients that do that. Uh, we've got an e-commerce client. I use them often as a case study. Uh, their ads are actually paused right now because they're making major changes in their supply line because of all the stuff that's going on with COVID. But they had a 15,000% ROAS. 15,000%. 15,000%, y'all. Like insane. They're making millions a month. Um, and it's because they gave us data and helped us point the muzzle. Super helpful to have. So, um, Jan, I hope that this answers your question. I really appreciate that question too, by the way. I'm sorry that I bring it up so often without context. The problem is I've actually explained this before on um, other calls or talks or webinars or whatever, and then I forget. I forget. So um, thanks for calling me to task. I hope that this is helpful to you and for you. Um, I'm telling you all, if you, if you really want to make money, the riches are in the niches. Um, I've built $3 million agencies, and each one of them is a niche agency. Uh, Google Ads agency, a real estate investment agency that focuses only on Google Ads, uh, a Montessori school specific agency. Um, so, you know, even if you're not an agency owner, if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, I, I, I fought niching down so hard tooth and nail. Um, and it wasn't even my idea. You know, John, it was John Moran, my business partner. It was his idea to niche down into Google Ads. Um, but this is what's made us successful. So if you have the opportunity, or even if you don't have the opportunity to go seek out the opportunity to find a really productive niche. And there's almost no such thing as a niche too small. There's only 4,500 accredited Montessori schools in the country, in, in, in the entirety of the United States. It might be the world. I don't remember. But in the entirety of the United States, for sure, there's only 4,500 accredited Montessori schools. There's only 4,500. And yet we've got an insanely profitable agency that really helps people. That's the other thing. You should see some of the testimonials from these, um, from our clients. Like we provide them with so much for so little. Uh, it's a pittance, you know, it's $10,000 a month worth of services for a thousand bucks a month. And, but we're able to do that because it's so scalable because it's so niche down. And, and the impact that we're making is unbelievable. It's, it's, it's heartwarming. Um, and you can do that when you niche down. So find a niche. Find a niche that you want to serve. Not even, you don't even have to be an agency. You can be anything you want to be. Let's say you're an accountant, you're a CPA, or you're an attorney. I don't care. Find a niche. I'm now the attorney for septic tank companies, whatever it is. You know, and you're like, well, there's not enough septic tank companies to serve all the attorneys. You're right. But there's enough to serve one in there. And if you go niche down and you're the only attorney that knows everything there is to know about septic, like, can you believe that? Can you believe a septic tank? You call them up and be like, hey, listen, I've gone to school in all the septic law in every state for the last hundred years. If you ever need a, a lawyer, I'm your dude, right? Your dude or dudette. Like, who could say no to that? Um, who could say no? So niche down. Um, I didn't mean for that to be the message of this video, but that's where we went. So I'm keeping it. Appreciate the questions, y'all. Keep them coming. Uh, love, peace, chicken grease. Shoot a video every day. See you tomorrow. Wait, before you go, I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. And we'd love to see you as a part of the Solutions 8 team. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction, and even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers if you're a subscriber. Don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.